wanted to show you this weed. This weed, which I want you to believe is in my garden, was scheduled for destruction in March. This video was taken in late July. In four months at home, without work, walking past it on average 18 times a day, I hadn't got so far as pulling its delicate root system out of the patio and snuffing out its precarious existence. March was a time of worrying about our family and loved ones, but also big dreams. Wanting to spend the massive gift of time we'd been awarded. Inevitably there was to be a novel. My wife and I thought we might just about have time to design and build our own helium powered motor vehicle. If the Prime Minister's travel corridors came to fruition, we might even make our long talk to our trip to Mars to carry our preliminary viability studies for a dim sum and juice bar we'd been talking about. Of course, none of these things happened. The weed's still around, and there's nothing to show but poetry about the things that really annoyed me during lockdown. I wrote this poem in mid-March when the whispers were of empty shelves and panic buying. I hope it portrays for you the uncertainty we were all starting to feel about our culinary futures. This poem is called Don't Buy It Janet. Don't buy it Janet. The shops won't run out of anchovies. Don't you see? There'll be plenty for you and for me. Don't buy it Janet. That tin contains 400 fish. Well-ish. They won't fit on a single dish. Don't buy it, Janet. You don't like anchovies, and neither does your friend Louise, and neither do I. I'd rather die. Thank you. This is where I was sitting in May, when I realised that in order to really make sense of the pandemic, I was going to have to read a great deal of Japanese poetry. I wanted to share a poem with you, not by me. This is a traditional Japanese haiku, originating from the late 17th century, but which I hope you agree really resonates with the times that we're living in now. The title in English translates as Asda Toilet Roll Multipack. I buy, buy more, store. Others call greed and try to share. I worry and laugh. Thank you. I need to be controlled. I need to be told which way to go. I love July because I love the arrows. I miss the arrows very very much. Oh hello, I'm so sorry to bother you, I think there are arrows on the floor. Hi, is it possible you could turn round just to lower my risk of infection? For the love of damnation, will you turn the buggy around? Now I'm recording this with yellow screen technology, so hopefully you should see a consistent colour yellow throughout the poem. Come on love, it's five to ten, get your lad to fix the modem, move the laptop, they can see that patch where the dog used to scratch before it died. I can't connect, we need more bandwidth, you're going to have to plead with Sam. If he gets off his Xbox for half an hour, you'll get him a pizza or a zinger tower. There they are, hi, we're here. God, Mike's getting big, Jed's on the beer. I like Jane's top, who invited Mick and Rhea? Oh, Dave's got no picture, only sound, I wish it was the other way around. Jesus, Stu shaved his head, he looks a right beaut. I can't hear what Siobhan is saying, Siobhan, you're on mute. Look at Margie and John's background, they're in space that's clever Jill's on about Ruth who is married to Trevor oh Dave's gone again jam we've lost Dave don't tell that story about hell until Dave's back oh Dave's back hi Dave Margie and John are on top of the Golden Gate Bridge now they're back in the kitchen that's a nice fridge Emily's filled her glass again where's that bottle gone I can only see Claire's arm she probably doesn't want to be on oh Mark's showing photos they're the ones we've seen no we can't see it Mark share your screen oh is that John's daughter she's on furlough Dave really ought to shave that beard though we should make our mojitos more like 
like theirs. Mick and Rhea have lost connection. No one really cares. Ah, they're all lifting their dogs up. What a shame we had Brandy put to sleep. Mark's hit the whiskey early this week. Have you noticed how Ed and Stuart never ever speak? Is Mark on some booker? Jesus, he's cutting loose. Oh, day's frozen. That's her excuse. Cheers, everyone. Low battery. See you next week. Bye. This is the step on which I stood in the early days of the pandemic on a Thursday at 8.07 p.m. We'd clapped the NHS, but I was worried that we might be late for my work Skype quiz. Topics to include small mammals of the United Kingdom and the recording career of Pat Benatar. Anyway, it was at this precise moment that I realised that with the exception of emergency workers, I hated everyone around me. And I wrote my first Covid poem, enigmatically entitled NHS. Our streets want big community, a loved up lockdown team. We all love the NHS, the best there's ever been. Nick from 8 didn't clap last Thursday, or the one before. I'm going to sneak in that bastard's garden and paint scab upon his door. Nathan Jones has gone to the park, second time today. I don't care that he's six years old, the little shit has to pay. Our streets want big community, a loved up lockdown team. We all love the NHS, the best there's ever been. A bloke from nines in 12 again, he's almost always there. Does it count as essential travel if you're having an affair? Care worker Dave's on the decks on Saturday. Street disco live from his flat. If the knobhead plays any more Coldplay, I'm going to run over his cat. Our streets want big community, a loved up lockdown team. We all love the NHS, the best there's ever been. I wish that Ray would stay away, way more than two metres apart. His serious halitosis is making my mask smell a fart. Ah, old Joe from 27. He looked fit and well today. There's a rumour that that bastard has self-raising stashed away. If he offers us a cherry scone, I'll kick his stick away. Our street's a bunch of chancers who probably steal your nan. But we all love the NHS and support them all we can. (laughs) 